Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Sarah Ekberg, and today I'm going to talk to you about one of the 21st century skills, which is financial literacy. And this is a super important skill to gather information around finances and how that can inform decisions in the organization. And today we're going to hone in on an activity that captures launching of a new service business or even um, a startup as a new venture. So this is an activity that you could use in a commercialization or entrepreneurship class or even as if you have students develop a new product or service in, in an organization, so more of a corporate strategy uh, activity. So basically this um, activity of doing a break-even analysis is a tool to determine at what point your company or new product or service will be profitable. So a break-even analysis is a financial calculation used to determine the number of products or services that you need to sell to at least cover your costs. So this is a way for you to teach the students the viability of their new product, service, or new venture because once they've broken even, they're not losing money, but they're also not making money. So it is, it is that minimum first step to actually launching a new product service or even a business in general, just to make sure that all your costs have been covered. So the learning outcomes of this is basically to minimize risks in a startup or in a company if you launch a new product or service. And it's also a way to understand the cost and pricing strategies as they will have to gather information to actually inform those decisions. Um, and then again, it explores the viability of a new venture or the launch of a product or service. This does not only capture the financial literacy in terms of 21st century skill, but it also covers problem solving, negotiation, confidence building, and communication. So what does a break-even analysis do? So if you have a class where you have students who come up with a new product or service and they have to bring that to market or consider if it's a good idea for an organization to expand into a new area or um, a new uh, offering, this could be a first starting point for them. So a break-even analysis could help you determine how many products you need to sell to cover those costs. So, if you have a service, it could be how many hours of that service you need to sell to actually pay for that office space that you have. So anything that you sell beyond the break-even point will add to your profits. So a break-even analysis will tell you exactly what you need to do in, over, in order to actually break even and get back your initial investment. But before you jump into that calculation with your students, it's important that you teach them some foundations. And there are only two that you need to know before this, and that's fixed costs and variable costs. So fixed costs are those expenses that stay the same no matter how many products or services that you sell. So for example, uh, rent would be a good example because it doesn't really change if you only sell five products or 20. You still have to pay that rent. Whereas the variable costs are those expenses that fluctuate up and down. So if I have a business and I sell a dress, then if I sell five dresses, I need to pay shipping for those five. But if I don't sell any, I don't have costs for shipping. So that's a cost that fluctuates depending on how many units I sell, right? So now we're digging into the actual formula once you have that foundation of the costs. So your break-even point is equal to your fixed costs that is then divided by the average price minus those variable costs that fluctuate. And once you pop in this equation, you will get the units that you need to sell to actually break even and cover those initial costs or investments. So when you do this in class, the very first step is to gather data. So the students need to go out and get that information of how much things costs, what is rent in the area that they want to launch in, um, how much does it cost to build a product, so how much is those different uh, gadgets that they need. <laughs> so it's really important that you just go out, do some research, and then write down all the costs associated to the product, service, or idea that they want to launch. And once they have that list, they can pop this into a break-even formula or a template. And there's a website that has a really good uh, template that's called Shopify. Um, so basically, you have two columns that you begin with, which is fixed and variable costs. Um, so you can see that these columns then total up the amount uh, in each column. And the variable cost is per unit, right? 
So this is not the total as it is with fixed costs because they don't stay the same depending on how many you sell. So both of these columns then total up into the top line where you can see the fixed costs and the variable costs. And in the middle, you have average price. And this again is a point where students need to gather data. They need to get an understanding of the competition and what the price could be so they can position themselves uh, in relation to what others already are doing. So you pop that price in, and then you will see that the average price minus, minus the, the variable costs are the contribution margin, right? Um, and then you take the fixed cost divided by that, and this all happens in the template, so don't worry, you will have the break-even units. So that's the amount of products or services that you need to sell to cover these costs that we've outlined. So let's make this a little bit more tangible. So I want to launch a business, and it's called Sarah's Toasty Wonders. So I want to start a takeaway shop where I sell homemade toasties. And it's super simple. It's just a little hole in the wall, two pieces of bread, melted cheese, and some toppings, right? And I want to launch this in West End in Brisbane. So I've conducted some research of the existing cafes, and I found that the average price of a toastie is $9. And I don't want to stand out too much, so I'm going to keep my price the same. And what I do then is that I fill in the template with my Toasty Wonders example. So my hole in the wall and my shop have a rent of about $2,000 um, and oh, $2,500. And I also have insurance to cover me in case something happens. And I also have utilities. So those amounts to the bare minimum. If I don't sell anything, I still have to pay that, right? But then I also did some testing with the bread and different toppings. And I found the average price per unit is about $5 to cover that bread, cheese, and maybe some other toppings on the bread. So as you can see, this is per unit, $5. And then this is filled in automatically in the top line of this template, where you can see the $3,000 fixed costs. You can see the $9 of the average price that I did research to find. Uh, you can see the variable cost of $5, and then which leaves my contribution mar margin to $4. And in one month, to break even, it gives my break-even units to 750, right? So that means that that's how many units I need to sell as the bare minimum of cover my costs. So it's really important at this point in time to push your students to think about if this is realistic. So this could be a point where you go back to the drawing board and actually consider these costs and prices and maybe adjust the template to see how that changes those units that you need to sell. But there is an opportunity to take this activity even further where you can actually test how viable this toasty business or whatever example that you want to use is. So once you have this information, you can change the template. You know, you can use the industry example that you're interested or change this to a context that you are interested in as well. Um, but if you want to continue with the Toasty example, you can also use the information in the instructor notes attached to this website. So if I continue with my capacity plan, if I can actually sell these units, I have to ask myself, do I have the capacity to make and sell 750 toasties a month as the bottom line. And that, at that point, I'm not even making money yet, right? That is just to break even. So let's say that I'm open five days a week, which means in a month, about 20 days. And as we've learned from the break even analysis, I need to sev sell 750 units. So 750 divided by 20 is 37.5 toasties per day. Let's dig a little deeper, shall we? So I'm all alone in this business. So as a one employee business, can I actually make this? How does it work? So I actually time myself. How long does it take me to take an order, make a toasty, and then hand it over to the customer? And I found that it took an average about five minutes from the customer walking up, placing their order, me making the toasty, and handing it over to them. So, the average time is five minutes, and I have 60 minutes in one hour, right? So that means that I can make about 12 toasties per hour. 
based on this timing experience. Hmm. Let's dig a little deeper. So let's go back to the break even with the 750 units uh, over 20 days, which is 37.5 per day. And I have 60 minutes, five minutes per toasty, which is 12 toasties per hour. So if I manage to sell at full capacity for 3.1 hours, that means that I will break even. And that's every day that I'm open. So let's say I'm open for six hours. That means that I have to sell at least six hours, uh, six toasties per hour throughout uh, this day. So it's really important to go back and think about the viability and the realism of those calculations and the per unit and timing, depending on the business that you have, of course. But what I, th what I think is so good about this whole uh, calculation is that it really pushes you to think about the viability of the business and if this could be sustainable in the long run. So this is really important to consider the pricing and to make sure you don't that you cover all the fixed costs that you have, or even catch some missing expenses. And it also helps students guide to set revenue targets beyond just covering your costs, right? And that in the long run will lead to some smarter decisions that are informed by financial information. And again, this could help limit financial strain, or perhaps even be a source of information that you can communicate to potential investors that wants to fund your business. So, on this website, you have access to the template, uh, the link to the template and also the instructor notes for the example of Sarah's Toasty business. So you can either use this example directly or you can change the template to suit your own industry and context. Um, good luck with your calculations and thank you for listening.